After I released my Canon XC10 review, one viewer commented that I should clarify how big a 1 inch sensor really is. It's become a fairly common size and I've reviewed a bunch of cameras, the Sony RX100 series, Canon G7X, Nikon's 1 series, that use 1 inch sensors. And I'll apologize, I've never clarified the designation. Although I do translate most metric terms to Imperial for American viewers, I don't bother to translate 1 inch to metric because it wouldn't make sense. <laughs> Clearly, I should. And by now you've guessed that it's not really 1 inch? <laughs> I'm going to try and be as mathematically accurate as is reasonable here, so you're going to hear a lot of abouts before numbers. <laughs> Between manufacturers, there are a lot of small differences. For the decimal point accurate details, check Wikipedia or the individual camera specifications. But you may not find it. For example, Canon does not divulge the actual size of the XC sensor anywhere I can find. <laughs> so, how big is a one inch sensor? <laughs> Let's start with a reference point. The size of an image taken with a 35mm film camera. It's a good point to start because it's one metric term that doesn't need to be imperialized. <laughs> These little film cans, if you remember them, were actually called 135 for some marketing reason. Incidentally, like vinyl, they're making a comeback. <laughs> but here's what's inside the camera. Nominally, a 35mm frame is 36mm by 24mm. That's the size of the opening between the lens and the film. You'll usually hear that referred to as full frame, and that is the nominal size of a full frame sensor, about 36mm by 24mm. Now, how did George Eastman, the guy who started Kodak and decided on 35mm as the height, get 36mm on a 35mm strip of film? Well, the entire height of the film isn't really usable, because perforations, those holes on either side, are needed to move the film. The distance between the perforations is nominally 24mm, and that is the actual constraint on the image. For a nice aspect ratio of 3 to 2, 24 millimeters tall dictates 36 millimeters wide. If Eastman had decided on 16 by 9 aspect ratio, then it would have been 43 millimeters wide, but it still would have been 35 millimeter film. 35 millimeter refers to the height of the film, 36 millimeters is the width of the image. Just to be clear, full frame is not the biggest sensor you can get in a camera, they get much bigger, but that's a story for another day. Full frame sensors and the cameras that have them are expensive. The majority of cameras use a smaller sensor, one size down, and used in most interchangeable lens cameras with and without mirrors is the APS-C size, also a Kodak standard. The advanced photo system type C was a film size, about 25mm by 17mm. Full frame, 24mm tall, APS-C, 7mm shorter. APS-C sensors are also called crop sensors, and that's really the best way to understand the size. Generally, APS-C has a crop factor of about 1.5, divide 24 by about 1.5 to get about 17 millimeters height, divide by 2-ish, multiply by 3-ish for a width of about 26 millimeters. Crop, because that's how much of a 35 millimeter image is lost if the film was used in the same camera. The next smaller sensor is the four thirds or micro four thirds, also a Kodak invented size, a crop factor of about two, a height of about 13 millimeters with a corresponding three to two width of about 18 millimeters. And then the one inch sensor, a crop factor about three, height about eight millimeters, width about 12 millimeters. That means nine one inch sensors are the equal of one full frame sensors. There are, of course, cameras with smaller sensors. They're called phones. <laughs> the possibly apocryphal story of the one inch term comes from the days when video cameras had tubes and turrets with three lenses. A one inch sensor tube had an actual detecting surface of about eight millimeters by 12 millimeters. Believe that at your peril, I wanted to check, but Henry's was out of stock of one inch tubes. <laughs> I've overlooked other intermediate sensor sizes Needless to say, there are more than these four, but these are the ones you'll find in the majority of cameras. And one last thing, 
the term super 35 millimeter is starting to be used. For images, stills are 36 millimeters wide. The film goes through the camera this way. For movies, it's the other way. So the term 35 millimeter for motion pictures, it's really 24 millimeters wide. The film goes through the camera this way, 16 millimeters tall. So 35 millimeter movies are no more 35 millimeters wide than the one inch sensor is really one inch and pretty much for the same reason. Now you know.